God. Creating Star Trek was a very spiritual experience. It's my world. It's that divinity in us that we call God. Cosmic thoughts, gentlemen. We were speculating. Is God really out there? Maybe he's not out there, Bones. Maybe he's right here. Human heart. The storylines that made Roddenberry famous were in fact given to him in conduit fashion from the demonic kingdom. Recounting his role as a medium, he states, What happens is that I bring them out into this world, the world of humanity, and they take their place among them, among us. But I don't think I create them. They already exist. I just introduced them. That's really where the whole idea of Star Trek came from. I'm just a vehicle, a transporter. Dun, 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 dun. Well, I come from six feet under with a dead guy on my knee. I'm heading down to Hades for to spend eternity. The sitcom Roseanne, starring the woman by the same name, was the nerve center for anti-Christian sentiment in the 1990s. Even worse than you thought. Well, what kind of crowd? He's not doing drugs, is he? No, no. <laughs> He's going to church. Oh, God, no. In her autobiography, My Lives, she spoke of leaving her body and communicating with voices from unseen beings. When I went away, I left my body completely and could hear other voices all around me chattering about how God would make me strong and how nobody could really get me. A spiritual message, really. The voices that she heard were not from the God of the Bible. The Ouija board wasn't sending me a message from the dead. <laughs> She has engaged in automatic writing. Roseanne writes of her channeling. It would all just come pouring out as if I were in a trance, and not until I reread it did I know what it was about. Sometimes it would scare me to read it because it seemed to belong to another place and time, and I would wonder, where did I get this? These demonic influences used Roseanne like a puppet to usher society into Crowley's New Age philosophies through her shows. Oh my God! It's not hard to connect the dots and see the common denominators that have worked through the lives of the Hollywood elite. The secular philosopher Socrates insightfully explained acting's essential spirit contact and possession. In like manner, the muse first of all inspires men because they are inspired and possessed. They are simply inspired to utter that which the muse impels them. For not by art or knowledge do you say what you say, but by possession. Socrates had a common understanding of the demonic power utilized by actors. This muse, or giver of creative inspiration, as shown through Socrates' statements, has always been perceived as a spirit. Anton LaVey of the Church of Satan instructs his followers and clarifies this fact. Keep yourself constantly open to the demons who will whisper in your ear. An old meaning of demon used to be closer to muse, a guiding inspirational spirit. The muses, or demons, are still at work today. Alexander Rose, the co-producer for The Other Sister, championed actress Juliette Lewis's ability to be totally taken over. Of Lewis, Rose says this. She just has that ability to transcend the reality of the moment and become the vessel for the muse. When she's acting, she is not Juliette Lewis. That, to me, is the sign of a really great actor. When you can let the muse take over, you look into their eyes, and no one's home. Kevin Bacon relates. Part of acting is to lose yourself in the moment, to let the chaos or the muse come and just enter and happen organically. Bacon also attributes his successful acting to demons under the surface, and as an actor, you have to keep them bubbling. The Matrix is Keanu Reeves who talks of having taken what he calls demon rides, says, It's hard to act in the morning. The muse isn't even awake. His series The Matrix is a hit with the youth and is filled with New Age preaching. Satan wants these philosophies to be presented in an acceptable light and is empowering Reeves to evangelize the children. Director Taylor Hackford revealed, Keanu is a very complex guy with lots of demons in him, and I was trying to tap and utilize that. Back when people would have idols, what they would do is they would put those idols in the main room in their house and they would center their furniture in their living room facing toward that idol because that's where people wanted their focus directed to. Oftentimes today, most of us have our furniture directed at what? The television set. And that in and of itself is not bad, but the question before God is, where is our heart? You know, the scripture says to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's his main thing. That's why he created us to have a heart relationship with us. If we feel convicted of something, that we should live a certain way, are we really loving Him if we don't do it? You know, Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And then He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? So the very thing that we want to do is be a doer 
of what the Word of God says, or be a doer of our conviction, not just be a hearer only. Meryl Streep's uncanny ability to inflect true life accents and characters has completely astounded her viewers. As her co-star on the film Postcards from the Edge, McLean studied Streep's acting performances. McLean said, Or put another way, perhaps that is the true meaning of channeling. A channeler puts aside the conscious mind and surrenders to another identity. That's the phenomenon I saw in Meryl. True to Crowley's instructions, River Phoenix sought out demonic possession in order to attain superstar status. River saw a sign in turning 23. He'd started having bad dreams uh, that there were demons that he'd always dreamt about when he was a baby that were coming to take him away. Phoenix admitted, I don't think I'm a very good actor. Everything is kind of tentative, and at a certain point you click in and you just feel the spirit move you. I think I can root out characters pretty well. I can be possessed pretty well. Well, I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. As goddaughter of Timothy Leary, America's drug guru of the 1960s, Winona Ryder is familiar with moving people through enchantment. At her best, which is considerable, Ryder can light up a screen with the skill of a sorceress. So writes Rolling Stone magazine of Winona Ryder, crediting her spirit guide for her cinematic exhibitions, Ryder states, My grandmother is still alive and has a lot of letters and pictures of relatives, and there's this one particular relative who was my age when she died. She was a violinist and an actor, and she looked like me. I have had this feeling for the last eight years that she was there guiding me and helping me with my performances. Vin Diesel also seeks contact with the supernatural, having stated, I'm going to do my best to channel the character on a spiritual level. Golden Globe and Oscar Award winning Halle Berry also has spirit guides that empower her performances to be more convincing and alluring. Oh. <laughs> Berry told Oprah how she was empowered to win her Golden Globe Award for her part in Dorothy Dandridge. Berry said, There were many moments on the set when a sort of strange aura sort of took over. And not only me, but other people would say, They'd come up to me and they would say, She's with you today, I feel it. And I often thought her spirit showed up to say thank you and to guide me. As you honor me, who you really honor is the eminent Dorothy Dandridge. Oftentimes the most innocent can be the most dangerous and deceptive. Oprah Winfrey will never let her tens of millions plus fan base know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, but regularly presents New Age deceptions and lies on her shows which are transmitted to housewives and families around the globe. Her influence with her magazine, TV channel, and book club are staggering. Where does she obtain direction for her shows and enterprises? Time Magazine gives us a frightening answer. Oprah Winfrey calls these her go there moments. It is during these moments, usually while jogging the winding trails on her Indiana farm, that Winfrey becomes overwhelmed by the sense that old spirits are trying to get in touch with her. And it is during these moments that the woman who loves to talk stops dead in her tracks simply to listen. Winfrey says she has come to know each of them personally and calls them in at will to guide her in her work. Another celebrity many will be shocked to discover communicated with demonic spirits and even received movie scripts from them was Michael Landon. Of his dead father, Michael Landon stated, I felt my father's presence with me, enlightening my memories. I really heard my father speaking to me from another dimension, filling my mind with just the right words. The story came so fast and was so right. In three days, the script was complete. While it is true that Michael Landon did present Christian principles in his shows, shows like Highway to Heaven presented a touchy-feely New Age God that anyone could ever relationship with without knowing Christ like the scriptures clearly state. Jesus made it clear when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Having endorsed on-screen homosexuality, spiritism, sexual immorality, and violence to list a few, Leonardo DiCaprio believes himself to be a vessel put on earth for acting. Vessels are meant to be filled and DiCaprio has opened himself up to evil spirits for this purpose. As Agnieszka Holland, DiCaprio's director in Total Eclipse explains it, Leo's like a medium. He opens his body and his mind to receive messages coming from another person's life. He's the new Leonardo DiCaprio. There's nobody like him and he's like nobody. Um, he's so special. He's a chameleon. He can do anything. It's, it's shocking. I mean, he was just born to be an actor. It's the same thing with Meryl. You see this and you just, you're dazzled by their talent. DiCaprio's director, Baz Luhrmann, stated that with Leo, you might see 30 people come out of him in a day. Oh, what's this? My poor Matilda. Don't be upset. Don't cry. This is a bad dream. One day I'll wake up. Love, Paul. Nice, was it?